Oh, somebody give God a praise. This is wonderful. Amen. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. It is joy. Turn to somebody and say, love is in the house. Amen. Say it again. So we got love in the house. Amen. You know, one of the beautiful things about Christianity is that it's not about coming to see Jesus. You came with Jesus. Amen. How many can say hallelujah this morning? Yeah. Well, because of the constraints of time, I would like to encourage you. You know, I look at the, the stage and I saw different age group. And the last one, happy birthday to Ezra. Amen. And, you know, sometime before I, I go, the Lord was just talking to me there. Because sometimes you come set and he reset. Amen. <laughs> so I must not forget that it's the Lord's house. Amen. And you are God's people. You know, we think about ages, and some, sometimes we think about the stages in our ages. Amen? Amen? Have you ever talked about the stages in your ages? Yes. It's amazing. Because when we were, uh, as we were a little one, like small, we were kids, and we were making spills. How many know we make a lot of spills when we are kids? Amen? Amen. And that spills, we say, oh, wow, that is something that happens to the kids, so... He allowed them to go. But then they get a little older and become teenagers and we start looking for trills. Amen. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then from that stage, we go on to a, a young uh, adult and we start getting drills and acquiring life skills. <laughs> Are there anybody in that stage? <laughs> yeah, we're picking up learning, the drilling you in school and you're picking up stuff. And then we meet the middle age and Guess what? We've got to go uphill. <laughs> and realize when we reach uphill, we have to pay the bill. <laughs> Amen? Amen? How many at that stage we are paying the bill? <laughs> Amen? Amen? And then you start to say, well, boy, this life is just, you know, gets one after the next. And then all of a sudden you find yourself, it just blurred, it just moved quickly. And you find yourself falling ill and start living on pill. <laughs> How many are in that stage now? <laughs> Amen. And then you say things going downhill, and you're thinking who to put in the will. <laughs> Amen. I just want to give you that. Anyway, it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter where you are. God loves you. Amen. This morning, I, I want to share a word from my heart to grow you, to understand and the power of God. You know, Pastor Mickey said something last Sunday. Let's give God praise for continuation. Could you all say amen? amen? Continuation is very important because whatever you gain, you must maintain. And when you maintain, then you will overcome all that is behind. Because a lot of times, a people, they, they get a touch here and they go back home and they forget that God is connected to every day of your life. Amen. amen. Today we want to this is a word, I just got it fresh from the Spirit, and I want to start off by with this talk is, whatever God builds, no man can kill. Amen. Amen. Can you lift your hand and say hallelujah today? I want you to shout that out. Say, what God builds, no man can kill. Amen. No devil can kill what God builds. No sickness can kill what God builds. Whatever you are there this morning, if you know that God has done something in your life, could you stand in this moment? Can we stand? I'm just... I'm just going to get into this. Hallelujah. I just felt it in my spirit. And, uh, you need to value what God has built. Amen. Uh, come on. Your Bible says in Philemon chapter 1, my brother said he will help me this morning. Philemon chapter 1 verse 7. Uh, it says here, acknowledging every good thing that is in you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want you to just thank God. Put your hands on your ears. Says I could hear the word today. I have the ability to listen to truth. Hallelujah. I have the ability to receive knowledge through my ear. I know that whatever I'm hearing, God is going to remove that which is not of him and I'm going to hear what God has to say. Amen, somebody. Yeah. So can you put your hand on your ear and say, I'm going to hear God. I'm turning down the volume on sickness. I'm turning down the volume of negativity. I'm turning down the volume of hearing the things of the world. Today the word of God is going to be preached and I will receive it. Amen. In the power and the authority it was written in Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is saying to tell somebody what God make, no man can take. Amen. The devil can take what God has made. Amen. When God builds, no man can kill. Amen. Brother, you have it? 
Philemon chapter 1 verse 7? No? Philemon. Philemon is not a... Amen. It's not a regular book because this is not a regular time. Amen. It's highly unusual. Hallelujah. So Philemon, Philemon, whatever you want to call him. Be seated. You're going to get it, brother? Okay. Amen. Thank you. One verse. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this again. Amen. Verse. Sec, you got to get it from verse. Time is just going on me, so I have to move quickly. Philemon chapter one, and it says here in the scriptures, acknowledging. Okay, let's go quickly. Verse six and seven. You got it, brother. Being confident of this very good, this very thing that which has begun in you. That's Philippians, brother. Philemon, P P H I L E. It says here that we acknowledge, let me just go with you, acknowledging every good thing that is in you that has been done, the work that has been accomplished has been accomplished not through your work, not by your doing, but by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, there is some things about our world today that we, the church, have to be very careful. We are not like the world. Amen. We are not what the world calls us. Amen. You are not to allow the label of the world to stick in your spirit. So sometimes an identity, identification, which is my topic this morning, identifying, amen, who you are, not in church, not in the world, but identifying who you are in Christ, amen. That's a key, hallelujah. So there, there is a tendency for us to find identity. You ask somebody, um, hey, uh, who are you? Well, you know, I'm from the islands. They use their, their country as their identity. Amen. They use their ethnicity as their identity. Amen. Am I talking to you? We use, uh, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm a doctor. So they use their profession as an identity. Amen. Isn't that true? He's a doctor. He's a teacher. He's this. Amen. Then we use... If we go a little further down, people use the identity like this. They say things like this. What they went through is who they are. He says, I'm a fighter. I went through a lot. You don't know what I've gone through. I, I know. How so you are using your experience as an identity. Amen. I'm going somewhere this morning. Amen. Amen. Is that true? If you have been, uh, I'm a widow, I'm a divorcee, I'm a this. So you're using titles and you call yourself that. And even further, if you go a little further, most people find their identity in their disease. Well, I'm a diabetic. I'm a heart patient. I, I, are you hearing me? Are we not going to talk here this morning? But I'm going to tell you that's false identity. That's fraud. Amen. I am not what the world says I am. I am what he says I am. How many of you use a mirror this morning? How many of you thank God? I know everybody in this room who comes to church use a mirror this morning. Amen. When you went in the mirror, did you see how good I was looking? No. Did you see how good your family member were working? When you look at the mirror, who did you see? Amen. That's what the word of God is. God's word is a mirror. Amen. It is a mirror that you must see how he sees you. Not how you see yourself. It's how God sees you. And once you get that, amen, it challenges everything. The identification or the identity of who you are in the eyes of God will stop a lot of problems in your mind. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, there was this woman. She was one of the greatest writers. She wrote 5,000 to 9,000 hymns in her time. She has written so much hymns that 
everybody was so odd. Her songs was like, pass me not a gentle savior, uh, rescue the perishing, blessed assurance. Are you hearing me? Amen. This woman was literally uh, a, a famous person writing all these songs, and she was really great. Her name was Fanny Crosby. And there was a story told that she was, she was blind. And this blind woman, she asked her, they said, listen. She said, I know that when I get to heaven, the first face I'll see will be Jesus' face. Are you there with me? Amen. She said, I don't mind. I don't see. But somebody came and tried to trap her and says, listen, you have never seen faces before. You have never seen human face. How would you know it's Jesus? How would you identify in heaven it's Jesus? Make sure Jesus is calling answer. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. I don't know. <laughs> How would you know if it's Jesus? And he said, I'll know. He said, how? He says, I'll know him by the nail scars in his hand. No one else in heaven has a nail scars. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. You've got to know him. Come on, somebody say amen. you got to know him. So, here is a little teaching that will challenge you, but it will bring you into a better place. I've always understood this, that when you are growing in God, your growth is depend on the knowledge you have. Amen. My people do not perish, the word says, not because of a bigger devil or a greater problem. They are perishing because of the lack of? Amen. And in a knowledge-filled society, we have not only just have knowledge about God, we have to have the knowledge of God. Amen. We call that in Christianity, accurate knowledge or even better, revelation knowledge. Amen. So this morning, how many know the one with the nail scarred hand is over your life right now? Come on, just lift your hand. It says, I know him. I know who I'm praying to. Amen. I know who I'm talking to. You may think. You know, sometimes when we're going through a trial one time, uh, we all have, how many have a moment that you end up talking to yourself? People look at you and say, hey, what are you, who are you talking to? In the washroom, and wave your hand if you know what I'm talking about. In the car, sometimes you get so caught up talking to the Lord, the employees or your your, your fellow um, co-workers look at you and says, "Are you mad? Are you what's wrong with you? How many you know when you get caught up talking to the Lord? Sometimes you get weird on the world, Amen. The world thinks you are weird, Amen. But they, don't, they, they can't identify you because if they know Jesus, they will know you. And the reason why they can't know you because they don't know him. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. But, but the thing about it, so somebody said to me, he said, Pastor, um, are you, you talking to yourself? I says, I never talk to myself. <laughs> so what? I never talk to myself. Why? Because I'm always talking to the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah today. I know some of you may not understand a certain thing, but I want to get this in your spirit. And this is very important to do this. We need to identify the true Jesus. Amen? So can we do a little thing quickly before we go there? So in your Bible, the Bible is written in such a way, I'm going to move a little quickly. The Bible is written in such a way that there's a New Testament and an Old Testament. Can we say Amen. There is a part in the Bible that is the promises of God that he was going to send a redeemer. He said in the book of Genesis that the seed of the woman is going to come and going to bruise or crush the head of the serpent. Am I hearing you? Amen. It says also that in Isaiah 53 that he will be wounded for our transgression. He will be bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of peace will be upon him. And by his stripes we will be healed. Amen. Are there anybody hearing me? Amen. So humanity was living in the hope of a Messiah. It was living in the hope of something. So there were many pretenders who came with the ideology that they will have power to redeem man. Amen. But no man could have done it because uh, where, whenever they tried, there was one area that had the final say, and that was death. Amen. They had philosophy, they had good things, they did good things. But when come to the grave, it was over. Amen. 
But then someone came along. Wave your hand. I don't know. <laughs> I want to identify. Amen. I don't want to identify. So let me just go through this. In the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, people tell me this all the time. Well, those are the histories of Jesus. Those are the stories of Jesus. And I say to them, yes, it may have historical account there, but there is something that you need to know. The Jesus of the Bible is the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he'll be the same for more. Amen. And if you understand that, you will come to the understanding. If the way people came to Jesus, in the old in the in those days if you come to him the same way you get the same results identity say it miss identity so there was a so Matthew Mark Luke and John brought the revelation of the incarnate Christ incarnate can we say incarnate it means that the word was made flesh and it dwelt among us. He walked. That which was that which was the Torah, that which was written in the Old Testament became life. It became moving. It came alive. Amen. He walked. The word was no longer a vocabulary. The word was no longer a historical account of Moses. The word became logos. It became alive. Amen. And the Bible says the word of God is quick and it is powerful and it is sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen. And that word walked among them, but they didn't know who the word was. The incarnate word did what? He, he did not just come to just, you know, we think that Jesus came to die for our sins. Is that okay to say that? How many know he came to die for our sins? Really? Really? Let's rightly divide the word. Let's identify the word. He came to save us. He came to die for us. Let's go through. So if he had to die for us, he had, we had a we, humanity, we had three fathers. We have the father of Adam, which he gave humanity their abilities to function through their, through their being on the earth. Then we have father Abraham, are you there with me? And then we had another father called the father of lies, amen. You know about him also. And he's giving birth also, amen, to children. And therefore, Jesus came, and he came more than just to say, I'm going to die for you. He came, listen to this carefully, he came to reveal who the Father is. Go a little deeper, don't fall asleep, only the sheep can keep what I just say. If it's a goat, you can't float. Because <laughs> that which was wrote, <laughs> <laughs> Take note, amen. <laughs> anyway, let me go back again. He did not just came to die. He didn't just came to die. If it was a death, he could have done that and went away. He came to do much more. Could you all say amen? I'm not, I'm not disputing that he came to die. I'm not disputing that you owed a debt that you couldn't pay. I'm not disputing, hallelujah, that you couldn't redeem yourself. But I want to go beyond the cross and show you where the devil lost. Amen, hallelujah. How many know there is Christianity beyond the cross? Wave your hand. So let me just go quickly. The Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John give an account of the head, which is Christ. But the epistles gives us a revelation of the body of Christ. It identifies the Christian who received Christ, who he is, not who he is in the world, but who he is in Christ. Amen. How many of we function in Christ? Wave your hand. A lot of people function in church, they function in their emotion, they function, but then you start functioning in Christ. When you function in Christ, do you know what you say? I can do what? True who? Who does what? How many of you are doing that right now? Amen. You are functioning in the identity of Christ. Amen. The epistle is such an important thing because I want to I want to go into that because I want to show you something. The incarnate Jesus, people touch him, the who of kind thing. But remember this, you already know your Bible. Remember when Jesus rose from the dead? Anybody remember that? Who was there? Who reached out to touch him? Who reached out to hug him? Who reached out and says, hey, it's the same Jesus who walked on water. What did Jesus do? 
It says this is different now. This is not incarnate. This is resurrection. I don't know hearing somebody. Hallelujah. Some of you still working for miracle maker. I serve the resurrection one. Amen. Some of you still with the lamb. But I'm on the lion's side. Give him praise and glory. The lion of Judah has triumphed. Amen. I want to identify not the cross. I want to identify the empty tomb. Amen. Somebody says that I may know him. You know, hearing me, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Amen. That's where the church, that's where, that's where you change the story. The story didn't change on the cross, it changed on the tomb. I wish somebody showed resurrection power. Amen. <laughs> that's what we, that's what people are. Uh, but you know, the church has this, oh, you know. Pastor, you don't know. Ask you, I ask you, sister, how are we going? Uh, and you say, it's only going as good. Or you're only as feeling as good as how it's going. How are you feeling? Well, it's, it's been tough, but I'm, well, I'm, that's what we say. But the Bible didn't say that about me. I want to identify what the Bible says about me. I'm watching the mirror. He says, let's look at it. He says, listen, the just shall live by faith. It's not how I'm feeling. It's how he's doing in my life. It's how God is operating in me, amen. I know the battle is big, but God is bigger. I know that, I know that, I know that there's a report out there, but I'm believing God's report. I'm not taking identity from the world. I'm taking God's identity, amen. It's not how you see me, it's how he sees me, hallelujah. Time is going quickly, hear this one. The most Christians are like this, amen, they are like this. There, there was this guy who was seeking illumination. He was seeking to find a, a, a way to serve God in a greater capacity. So he decided, you know what? I'm going to leave the world and I'm going to the, uh, a wilderness area and I'm going to sit in that wilderness until God talked to me. So he find a nice spot on that tree, isolated himself and he's sitting there and said, God, talk to me. I'm here. Amen. Well, he's doing that, and as he's thinking that he's doing the right thing, he's waiting for God to talk to him, and he's thinking about that. Lo and behold, he happened to wander around with his eyes, and he saw, not far from him, an animal that was crippled, a fox. And he saw the fox had been injured by the hunters, and he's been there on the side of him, and just staying there. But he looked again, and his amazement, he said to himself, this is a crippled fox, but it looks healthy. It looks well fed. It looks good. So he's wondering about that. As he began to wonder about it, he said, oh, I wonder what God is saying to me here. Are you there with me? But then to his, um, uh, to his startlement, while he was watching this way, he saw a big lion come in the other end. And in his moment of fear and panic, he just forgot about all about God and finding the nearest tree. So he climbed up on the tree, and he's sitting there, and he says, oh my gosh. And then he saw something amazing. The fox passed him. I mean, the lion passed him with some meat on his mouth and went on to where the hungry fox was, dropped the meat at the hungry fox's feet, and walked on. And the fox ate it, and he, he jumped down and says, thank you, Lord. You show me the way. <laughs> Amen. So he felt so good. To have seen this nature, this thing in nature where a lion fed a hungry crippled fox. So he thought God is saying to him, well, this is it. So he decided to stay under the tree. And you know what he says? I'm going to wait for God to feed me. <laughs> if God could feed a crippled hungry fox and use a lion, you know God can do that for me. And anybody hear me? Amen. And that's the majority of the church could say. So he's waiting. One week passed. No, but nothing shows up. So he's like, God, did, did, did you, know, did you show me that? I didn't tell you. You give me that sign. How many are like that? Amen. He's taking on this. And he began to get mad with God because God ain't coming through. He says, you're feeding the fox. He's crippled. How can you not feed me? Amen. How can you not feed me, Lord? You don't know what I'm going through. Can you not? I have here. I've made up my mind. I have sat here and I'm waiting on you. Amen. 
Because of time, I have to cut the story short. But are you getting anything? He's so weak now. He's made from his, all his excitement. He's on beer. His body is going through. He's barely, God, God. And so happened, a little boy was passing. He was playing out there. And he passed by and he told the little boy the story. He says, son, I'm so hungry. But God showed me this. He showed me a, a lion feeding a fox. And I know God will meet my need. And the little boy said, sir, I know God showed you it. But I think you interpreted it the wrong way. Why are you choosing to be the crippled fox when you could be the lion that feeds? <laughs> Let's get rid of the victim mentality in the church and become a victor today. Amen. <laughs> Stop looking for what God has already finished. Wave your hand and say hallelujah. The mentality of most Christians is they come to get when you're already set. God already set you up for life. Amen. I have scriptures beyond. To, if I go in, in, in the book of Peter, the Bible says you are partakers of, your, of the divine nature of God. In, in James chapter 1 verse 18, Peter talks about you have the inheritance. Somebody say amen. If you know what you have in you, the only problem is that somehow or the other, we have people coming, and I'm sorry if you're hearing this message in a way that it didn't kind of come out, but God is speaking to you. You are not the crippled fox. What somebody says, I'm not crippled, amen. I am the lion. There's a lion in me. There is power in me. There is power in me, amen. I'm saying it to those who have found Christ, Amen. The Bible says in, in the scriptures, if you look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, and again, I, I excuse me if you can get that, 1 John 4, 17, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of what? That we may have what? I'm not going to say, Lord, I know you know all my do wrong. Father. You see, when you have a sin mentality or a sin consciousness or a problem, you can't be bold. Amen. But when you know that there is power in the blood. When you know that what God kill, no man. What, says, what will God build, no man can kill. Amen. How many can say hallelujah? The secret today. Okay, the secret today, amen, is knowing who you are in Christ. Not who you are in the church. You could be an usher. You could be a preacher. You could be a deacon. And you just don't know God. You can know the whole Bible and still don't know who he is, amen. To know him is to love him. The key, my friend, is when you know God, you love people, Amen. You can't tell me you know God and you hate the brother next to you. Amen. You can't tell me that you are walking in love with God, but you are not, can't have the love to share with one another. Amen. Can you wave your hand and say hallelujah today? Rabasoto Ruboshar. I remove the, 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 the eyes of you looking upon the body of being crippled. You are not a cripple, amen. You are not less than. God did not pay. Uh, uh, he did not get a, a deal with the devil and get a cheap sale on you. You were premium. Amen. You are premium. Hallelujah. Stop beating yourself down. Stop allowing yourself to be less than what he says you are. Amen. Are you hearing this say amen today? Somebody in first in, in first Peter chapter 2, amen, verse 9, 10, and 11. Quickly, I'm going to stop here. I, I, but you are. You are. It is a, you are going to be. You are going to be when you get to heaven. You are going to be when you, no. He says, but you are. Is that present tense? If your hand says, I am. The word, the word chosen generation, can I give you a little word quickly because of the, the word generation finds its root word in the word genes. G-E-N-E, -E, genes. 
If you look at the word gene, it means that it tells you about what the color of your hair will be, your skin type, your pers- your genes gives you the ability to function in who you are. And even before you arrive, your gene has coded everything. Come on, I'm not hearing somebody. You are a chosen You have been programmed by the Holy Spirit to be a holy people. A royal, oh come on, amen. A royal priesthood. This world is looking to devalue you when God has already esteemed you, amen. Do not demean what God has esteemed. Are you hearing me, amen? Do not demean what God has esteemed. Lift your hand. It says, I'm chosen. Touch your neighbor and say, I hope you're not frozen. Because you are chosen. Amen. Let the genes come alive. Let the genes in you activate. Let the genes in you. Amen. When you hear the word of God, you can't help yourself. When a man and woman that is born of the word, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are set up for, for what? For let me just read the last part. It says, out of the darkness. You have called you out of the what? Can I say something before I go? How many of you know that this is a dark time? Maybe your hand if you know. A dark time. You look at the news. You look at the explanation. Darkness. But do you want to know something? Darkness is only the result of the absence of light. Stop complaining about the darkness and let your light shine today. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Let your light shine in that darkness. My genes is not because of what you are. I I trail myself. That's what Jesus said. Don't call no man father. He was not disrespectful. He was saying, trail your genealogy back to God. How many can find yourself back to God here this morning? You have, been, you have been beaten down. Your own parents, sometimes back in the islands, when the parents get mad with you, says, oh my God, I wish I planted a fig tree instead of having you. <laughs> Ever heard that expression? Oh, I wish I did this and have you. You messed up my life. And some of you have been dealing with that abuse for a long time. People you love the most has given you so much a hurtful word that you don't know how to deal with it. Amen. And you're operating on what your father said or your mother said or your friend said or the world said. But today I want to thank God you got a word from the Holy Spirit. You are not what the world says you are. You are what God says you are. I know. Father, we lift our hands in this place. So I was going through a very Nice time, trying time. <laughs> Count it all joy, amen. And I was sitting there in a park and I was just talking to God. And I wanted to talk to God and I wanted to tell him everything. And he says, I know everything. Why are you telling me everything? <laughs> just learn to know who I am, amen. The prodigal son came to his father and he came with this identity in his mind. I no longer want to be called a son. Make me a higher servant. It's called false humility. You think that because you want to be, you're done so bad, you want to be less than. But did the father says, okay, I'll put you in charge of the farmyard. Did he do that? The father's arms were greater and wider. He would have not, he don't want to know where you met. Your sin problem is not your problem. It was dealt by Calvary, man. Can you lift your hand and say hallelujah today? And as I was there, the Lord gave me one word and I, I said, whatever God, whatever God builds, no man can kill. Stand to your feet if you believe that. Amen. And then find three people and turn around to them and say, you are built to last. Go quickly. Say, you are built to last. Say, the gates of hell cannot prevail. No obia can work against you. No bad eye can work against you. No wicked mouth can work against you. You are built to last. Amen. 
you are built to pass through this hallelujah when others are crumbling you will be standing amen Dada. come on i'm hearing somebody in this place you are built to last amen yeah hallelujah you are built the inside is greater than the outside amen find somebody next to me says brother don't let the outside fool you i'm stronger on the inside amen don't let that know what you see fool you are. This church was built to last. Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. What God built, no man can kill. Amen. This is in the will of God. Amen. Let's lift our hands and say, if you're hearing this message, all I want you to do is come to the altar and let's activate that part of you. Amen. Oh. Ready?